some of us, we give God till 1158. 11.59. We're like, okay, God, it's midnight. I gave you 24 hours and you didn't do anything for me. Hi, family. Welcome to another Truth and Love devotional. My name is Ludi. Praying you're having an amazing week wherever you are in the world, an amazing day. And if it hasn't been amazing, I prophesy in the name of Jesus, it is going to turn around right now in Jesus' name. We are diving into Isaiah 64, verse 4 today. And it says, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. And we all love the song, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. I think it's Maverick City and Elevation. He will renew your strength. And that's from Isaiah 40. We all love that song. And the revelation the Lord gave me when I was reading this scripture is a lot of us don't see the acts of God because we don't know how to wait. One of the prerequisites for you to see the act of God, the Bible says he acts for those who wait on him. I remember years ago, I was working with a coworker who didn't believe in God. And he said to me, well, if God was real, you know, why doesn't the Red Sea part anymore? Like, I want to see those great acts. Well, one, we don't need the Red Sea to part. You have a boat. <laughs> you have a plane. <laughs> you can get on a helicopter. But additionally, we don't wait on God anymore. We're in this generation of go, 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 figure it out ourselves. We're the generation of I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps, which is impossible, by the way. No one pulls themselves up anywhere. But we don't wait on the Lord. One of my favorite scriptures is in Psalm 46. It says, the scripture, it says, just at the break of dawn, God will show up. Actually, let me read the actual full scripture because I don't want to, I paraphrase it, but Psalm 46. All right, I'm at 49. Y'all are watching this live. Psalm 46. You know what? I'm going to read the whole psalm. This is a segue. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose streams may glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Now, know anything about the break of dawn? It's literally at that point where the night starts to become day. And some of us, we give God till 1158. 11.59. We're like, okay, God, it's midnight. I gave you 24 hours and you didn't do anything for me. So now I'm taking matters into my own hands. Um, It says just at the break of dawn. And this is not to limit God to a certain time. It's to say that you need to give God time. Time. And in that time, it's not because he needs time to get things together. Oh, heaven is, you know, rushing around. No, the time you give God is to say, God, I trust you. I trust that you're going to get this done. And even if you don't get it done in the way that I expect, there is something still here in this day for me. The Bible says that this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter the day, no matter what it looks like, there is a reason and a and an ability and an availability for you to rejoice in that day. So whether it's an issue with your finances, whether it's an issue with your health, whatever you've been waiting on the Lord for, and Luis and I share about our infertility um, journey on our seven things we've learned in seven years. Hopefully that's live now. If it's not, come back to the channel when it does go live, share, like, subscribe, turn on the notifications so you'll be notified when it comes. But in this seven years, we have learned on seventh year, why we've been struggling. And so there are things that you're waiting on God for. And the Lord specifically told us we couldn't take matters into our own hands. We couldn't do IUI and we couldn't do IVF. And so some of us, we want to do our own thing, but you don't know that you're hindering the Lord. 
because you want to get your hands in it. And you don't really hinder him because you can't really hinder God. You hinder yourself. You limit yourself. You delay yourself. When he has a plan for you, his plans are for good and not of evil, to bless you, to prosper you, to give you a hope in a future. But because we don't have the understanding of heaven, the Bible says as far as the east is from the west, so as he removed our transgressions, and as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways. His ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And so if you try to help the Lord, take it from a professional assistant to the Lord, okay? I would create him graphs, PowerPoints, you know, all the things like, God, this is what should be happening and the time it should be happening. Lord, you laid the angels not doing their job. Let me show you what needs to be done. Like that was me. And so I get it, y'all. But when you wait upon the Lord, he's going to do the work. You will see his hand. You will see him move. It says, you act for those who wait. I don't know if you've ever been around children and they are eating. And they're like, well, I need help. And then you rush over and they figured it out. What do you do? You walk away. Even if they're doing it wrong, you're just like, okay, well, you're taking care of it. That's how we are with God. We need God. He comes and it's like, well, you've already... You've already started doing your own thing. Do you want my advice on how to fix it? Or do you want to just keep doing your own thing? Because we did not wait. So whatever that looks like, everybody hands up. Take your hands out of it. Stop moving because you might be moving in the wrong direction. Sit and say, hey, Lord, did I make this decision with you or was it on my own? Did I move before the time? Because even the right thing at the wrong time will become a curse. Sex out of marriage is not a good thing. Sex and marriage is a good thing. It's the same thing. The timing matters. So wait on the Lord, y'all, and you'll begin to see miracle signs and wonders. I love you guys. I will see you on the next one.